10. Prime Minister Honorable Philip J. Payne, along with Minister for Health Honorable Moses Jabab Teeth and other government officials, toured the site of the St. Jude Hospital reconstruction project and received an encouraging progress report on the construction status. So the most complicated part of the work is to get the MEP right, which you don't see because most of it is concealed. So as we have completed these works, I think the rest of the works will progress pretty fast and we will be, we'll make a good headway. With the financing in place, finishing the St. Jude Hospital reconstruction project is imminent and the long-awaited relocation of the St. Jude Hospital to its original home will finally begin. Nine. When we met on July 18th, the team from the Owen King EU Hospital indicated to the Prime Minister what the situation was and they, they, they gave us the cost. Prime Minister simply said, go ahead. So we went to the CIP board and we asked them for $11 million to help us to pay these outstanding payables. The board agreed. So we took $5 million from the surpluses to put the $11 million, hopefully to clear the $16 million backlog. So you can reduce, you can use your allocation for working capital. Eight. Over 1,000 farmers have received 1,000 gallon water tanks and 117 CMOS rafts have been deployed between 2023 and 2024 to boost the growing CMOS industry. One million in direct support has been provided to farmers who lost their bananas due to packaging shortages. 26.1 million has been invested in rainwater harvesting, soil conservation, and green agro-processing facilities. Additionally, 670,000 in fertilizer subsidies between 2023 and 2024, and over 120,000 subsidized siblings at $2 per plant are helping farmers achieve abundant harvests. Seven. Education Minister Honorable Sean Edward called the meeting with ancillary staff, namely caretakers, watchmen and janitors, to express his appreciation for the work that they do and to discuss the challenges they encountered in performing their duties. For us to have a solid education system, all of us must work together and your role should not be trivialized. In other words, we have to take what you do seriously. I want to encourage you to take pride in what you do. You are making a meaningful contribution to the development of your country. Six. An introductory meeting between members of the St. Lucia Teachers Union's most recently elected executive body, Minister for Education, Sustainable Development, Innovation, Science, Technology and Vocational Training, Honorable Sean Edward, and other ministry officials has been hailed by representatives of both parties as a success. Um, we have brought to the fore many of the teachers' issues, many of the challenges that they face, and uh, we are working with the Ministry of Education to ensure that with the reopening of school, that our teachers are working in safe and healthy environments. Five. The Ministry of Agriculture, in collaboration with the Taiwan Technical Mission, hosted a training session on the proper cultivation techniques and ways of combating major pests and diseases of five varieties of okra, inclusive of three local varieties and two newly introduced varieties. We want to have that diversification in the market where world farmers um, are used to and to introduce some varieties which will cope better with the climatic conditions on island and that will increase production for the farmers. Four. The Cabinet of Ministers approved the revocation of the water-related emergency. So it means that as of immediate effect, the water-related emergency is null and void and people are expected to use water as normal. Three. As part of the activities organized by the Regional Integration Unit of the Office of the Prime Minister to recognize the 50th anniversary of the Caribbean community, CARICOM 3, the Regional Integration Unit 
engaged students throughout the length and breadth of St. Lucia who came together to get information on CARICOM, on the Caribbean community, the work of the organization, and the opportunities available to them as they transition out of school and into the world of work. Two. Always, the government has always advocated that we know our history. We know where we came from and where we are going. So we've made this small contribution to ICA, who continue to promote the history of our people, the history of our country. We encourage the Prime Minister to keep on that level of consciousness that he has. We need this in this day and time, a leader that understands those things, understand our story, for him to be able to assist us as time goes by. Morning, wow. everyone. This morning we have a simple ceremony, a check-handing ceremony to the Ubuntu movement. As you know, they're involved in the CIS project, and the CIS project is a social intervention project. Let me first extend our deepest gratitude to the Office of the Prime Minister for supporting the Ubuntu movement on our activities of developing at-risk youth and providing opportunities for them, particularly those in the community of Beaufort. 